Hello, hello everyone. Thanks so much for coming in this Wednesday. I appreciate you guys being here so much. Thanks Replay viewers for watching and thanks YouTube viewers for checking this out as well. YouTube viewers, if you'd like to participate live and join in the chat, you can join me on Periscope at 9.30 p.m. Central every night. Uh, just search for Penguin and Fish in the Periscope app. Hello, Libby, thanks for coming in. All right, we are going to try and finish this guy up tonight. I am, I'm excited we have a day of rest, basically, before we get the new block tomorrow, and I'm hoping to finish up this embroidery. I'm gonna flip you guys around and we'll get going. Hey guys, I see you popping in, thanks so much. So we are just about done with this block. Uh, this is block, what is it? Block 31 of the Splendid Sampler. Oh, and my mom just popped in, P.A. Scholes, there she is. <laughs> but all we have left is this little section right here. Hello! <laughs> so I'm hoping we can finish up this embroidery tonight. This will probably take the whole hour to do yet. Uh, it's, it's um, you know, there's not that much, but embroidery does take a little bit of time. I do have my my water uh, my water buckets or glass bowls I guess <laughs> I have my water glass bowls uh, uh, full and ready to go just uh, in case we have time yet tonight I would love to be able to take off the sticky Fabricelby which is this embroidery stabilizer uh, that we use to print the design to so we've printed this design directly to the embroidery stabilizer and I've stuck it on like a sticker. And I'm hoping that we can dissolve it tonight too. It, it washes away in water. So I have a couple little things of water here. I'm hoping we can wash it away. And then I, I um, iron it right away, and it, which dries it out. And we'll have a perfectly finished block, um, except for maybe trimming it down tonight. Um, as long as I'm getting an embroider pretty quick here. So I'm going to try doing the finishing the whole thing tonight because I need one of these blocks knocked off my list. Uh, this is... I have eight unfinished blocks right now, and if I can get this one done, then it'll only be seven, and seven is way better than eight. <laughs> so, all right, guys, I'm going to flip you around. Um, if you're new here, my name is Alyssa Thomas from Penguin and Fish, where we make lovely and quirky hand embroidery patterns and kits. I'm a fabric designer and the author of Sew and Stitch Embroidery, and I'm here every night at 9.30 p.m. Central, where we craft, and lately we've been working on the Splendid Sampler quilt along and we've been working pretty much solely on that because I am eight blocks behind so any time that we have off we kind of fill it up with with uh, finishing up blocks. So you can find out more at uh, thesplendidsampler.com if you want to find out more about that. All these blocks are free for right now and uh, we get new ones every Thursday and Sunday so it's almost tomorrow's new block day already so I gotta Get this one done! I want it off the roster! So, alright guys, I'm going to flip you around and we will get going. Alright, so here you go. Here's... Oh, you know what? My iron's over there yet! Uh, I'll have to set that up. But I got my ironing board with a fluffy towel on it, and I have my two water um, glass bowls over there ready to go. And uh, first, we need to finish all this embroidery. So here we are. Um, I, I just have this create, uh, these little cute cross stitches learn, giving uh, these lines around it, and the lazy daisy uh, little stitches with French knots. Oh yeah, so my mom finished um, the hexies. Oh, did you get it stitched onto, uh, onto the background too? I think I might work on that one if we have um, our next time we have time. Oh, so you have it completely finished. Oh, that's cool. Oh, you totally missed that block. Yeah, I think I only was able to work on it two days, so um, I didn't get the whole, like, three or four days to work on it. All right, so I'm just, uh, I'm going to do two strands of floss, so I'm going to grab them one at a time out of here, just because it's, it's a little faster than trying to um, unwind the two. Oh, I'm flipped already? All right, let's, uh, let's do that. The boys are impressed. Oh, nice. <laughs> My brother and my dad, my brother is still in, or I don't know if he, I don't think he is anymore. Um, maybe he is. Mom, is Jared still in town? But my brother who is going to Australia, he's, uh, he was around while mom was doing um, the uh, hexi block. 
All right, so I'm just pulling that one strand out. It's so easy to pull out one strand. It just relaxes right when it's done. Um, so that's one. Yep, Australian winter. Oh, he's probably in LAX right now. Okay, so he's just traveling. Oh, wow, so today he's traveling. So uh, there is a big layover, I'm sure, or some sort of layover in LAX, but from then it's LAX, which is Los Angeles, um, to, uh, to um, is he going to, into Melbourne? I think he might be going to either Melbourne or Canberra. I'm not sure. But yeah, that's a long flight. <laughs> Yep, I'm just doing two strands on this one. Um, this one, I'm doing two. I normally use three. Oh, it's it's whatever you want to do. I think I don't I don't know if they mentioned if it's uh, how many strands to use. I'm just personally using two strands because it's such a delicate. It's a pretty intricate and delicate. Um, and you know, some of these things are are really close to each other. Some of these lines. Oh, you know what? I need an embroidery hoop. Oh man, I don't think I have an embroidery hoop. Okay, you guys, I have to run over here quick. Oh, but I can show you something else that's kind of fun. Here, I'll be right back. So do you guys remember uh, this guy? <laughs> so this is how far I am on the kitty embroidery. I haven't, I haven't been working on it very much, so um, I'm, I'm filling it all in. With, with stitches. So this is how far I am on this, but I have to steal, I have to steal the hoop for this guy. <laughs> yeah, so I normally use three strands, but I'm, I'm using two just for, for this particular, this particular one. Oh, kitty! Yep. <laughs> so, all right. There we go. Now we can get started. I've got my hoop here. Tic-tac-foe, that's my other brother. <laughs> yes, this is the one-eyed kitty. <clears throat> little one-eyed kitty cat. I guess he had a little surgery on his eye, so he's only got one eye. But man, it takes so long to fill in an embroidery like that. I don't know. I don't know if it's for me. I, I like doing it, but man, I like when projects get done a whole lot faster than this, this does. I don't put a stabilizer in the back. I'm just using the stabilizer on the front, and that's that seems to be plenty fine for me. All right, that wouldn't wouldn't have been nice to stitch it without a hoop. We could have stitched it without a. a it just makes it easier with a hoop, for sure. All right, now we can get going. <laughs> All right, let's get. Uh, an embroidery needle out of here. Yep, we're doing embroidery tonight, Kathy. All right, so I got my two strands. I'm gonna weave it into the back and we'll get started with this word create. I think we're gonna start from the E and work our way this way because then we can make a quick easy jump to start stitching in this stuff and then we'll pick up the rest of this line. So that, that's my plan of attack here. All right, so where was that again? Okay. We'll just kind of weave in the back of this, this little tulip or rose bud or whatever this is. So instead of doing the away knot, since I have all these stitches on the back, I am just weaving it in to get, to get going. I think my mom's totally caught up with all of her blocks. Uh, and she's got some bonus ones under, under her belt and stuff too. She's, she's doing way better than me. <laughs> Staying on task here. <laughs> Alright, let's snip this off. Yeah, I, I'm loving the weaving of it. Um, it allows the weaving and using the away knot to start out. I have no knots on the back of this at all so it makes just like a really kind of nice clean back and nothing's catching on anything and uh, it's working fine so all right let me get the first stitch started and i'll get you guys in focus there we go yeah exactly i don't that's that's the whole thing knots can come out 
a whole lot easier in my, you know, as far as, you know, this is my philosophy at least, uh, they can come out a lot easier than the weaving it in where you're catching a bunch of little threads and um, it's just that you're doing it in and out three times, it's really, uh, it's got enough to hold it in there versus a knot that could come, just could relax and, and get loose. And with a knot, I'm always finding that I'm catching my floss on it in the back and then I have this whole giant loop that I didn't know about because it was caught on some knot and and all those things. So I I like having a knot free back on, on my embroideries. All right, so I'm gonna try and go kind of quickly through here. We'll see how I do. Um, it may be a little later one tonight, just warning you up front, because this is quite a bit of embroidery to do yet. I'm doing the back stitch. I'm, I'm a pretty much exclusively doing the back stitch on this embroidery, except for when it plainly calls for something else, like when there's a dot and, you know, these little things, I'm assuming it means a lazy daisy stitch and a French knot and, you know, these are little cross stitches and, you know, like a little running stitch here. When, when it's clear from the design that they want me to do a certain stitch, I'm doing that. Otherwise, I am just doing a back stitch. I, I like the back stitch just because, to me, it feels very, very like, embroidery-y. <laughs> um, you know, I like that you can see each of the little stitches. I mean, you know, you can see every little pearly stitch. Uh, whereas some other stitches, like a split stitch, would be another typical stitch that someone would use for this, or, a, or I mean, but a split stitch, it kind of blends all the lines together, I think, and I like, yeah, it gives the handmade feel, exactly. I, I like the little beads that you get with a back stitch. A back stitch does use a little bit more thread and everything, but I'm not too concerned with that. I got enough thread to last me forever, so. <laughs> And it, it's like 40 cents for a piece of floss, so. Oh, yes! Cora, how is that coming? Cora's making three embroideries uh, that say snap, crackle, and pop on it for her chiropractor. <laughs> is it okay to do a stem stitch? It is absolutely perfectly okay to do a stem stitch. So, a stem stitch... Um, I don't have any stem stitches in this embroidery right now, but it does kind of double up your thread because when you're doing a stem stitch, you're stitching like one stitch and then you're sticking, stitching another stitch right next to it. So though you have kind of two stitches next to each other. Hey, Andrew, thanks for coming in. Nice seeing you. <laughs> um, but you kind of have two stitches next to each other. So you're basically doubling the thickness of your stitch. So if you're planning on using a stem stitch, I would definitely use less threads because you are going to get that double thickness. But yeah, um, stem stitch is a very common traditional stitch. Um, it used to be kind of, kind of the main stitch that people would learn um, how to embroider with. I'm actually not all that good at it, and I, I've just recently, it's recently clicked in my brain how to do it, and uh, the reason that it, it never really clicked for me is because I like doing this stabbing motion, so I like stabbing it and pulling it all the way through, and then, then um, stabbing it back out and pulling it out like that. With a stem stitch, the way to do it well is, uh, or the way to do it where it, it kind of is easy and makes sense. You have to go in and out in the same stitch and pull, and then your next one is the same thing. So it, I never could get it well with my stabbing motion, but if you, then I figured out, oh, if you just go in and out at the same time, if you do that method of stitching, then the stem stitch is, is really fun and a whole lot easier. <laughs> then you're, loops aren't getting in the way and thread isn't all over the place. It's just easier then for sure. It seems a puck of the fabric though. 
Um, I think you just have to, you just have to practice consistency and stuff in that case. I think it doesn't, I mean, you know, you just have to really practice how tight and loose you, you make things. It can pucker the fabric, but I don't think any more than, than other stitches really do. I think once, uh, if you get like really comfortable with a stem stitch, I'm sure it's just like cruising around and it's just fine. I don't have the packer, it's just thicker. Okay, I'm totally missing what you guys are talking about. I, I missed something as I, as I was embroidering. So we're almost done with the word creator already though, so that's good. Oh, puckers. I, I saw, okay, that makes more sense. I saw the word packers and I'm like thinking of uh, the Green Bay Packers uh, or like something else. And then I'm like, she doesn't mean the packers. What does she mean? And couldn't figure it out. All right, so we are gonna finish up the word create and I'm gonna jump right down to these cross stitches. So remember, that's why I started here, um, because I'm, I'm kind of mapping mapping the way I want to do this. So instead of starting here at the create and going to the E, I would have to make a jump to really weird places. Like, you know, in theory, I'd want to start this line over here, but that'd be a pretty big jump. So if starting over here and going this way, now it's a little, little jump to these X's. So before I started, I kind of wanted, I kind of planned out my direction a little bit. All right, so now I'm going to stitch these cute little X's, little cross stitches. Just wanted to check my back. I felt like my thread was a little shorter, but I think we're fine. I am using two strands of floss for this. Two strands is pretty typical for, for um, embroiderers. For me, I usually like using three strands, but this is um, just a really more delicate, detailed embroidery than I'm used to doing, than, than my embroideries, basically. My, my embroideries are a lot simpler than this in general. Um, so I'm using two strands just because I thought, okay, the only reason to do different numbers of strands is to control the thickness and thinness of your lines. So I knew that I had like lots of little lines really close to each other. If I did three strands, I thought that this like dotted line here would just merge. Like if I push these two stitches together, if they were thicker, it would just kind of merge and be one large blob of a, of a line. So I wanted to use less strands to give it a thinner line. <laughs> yeah, embroidery is definitely soothing. It's one of those things though that you have to just let yourself do it and not get wrapped up in um, how long it's going to take. You just have to kind of chill and be like, okay, this is different than our pieced blocks. We're just going to sit here and we're going to enjoy ourselves. And if you allow yourself to be soothed, then it is, it is um, soothed. Yeah, so I saw uh, it's potentially a rickrack block tomorrow. So rickrack is that woven ribbon that's kind of like a zigzag. Uh, Pat Sloan, who is one of the beginners, or the one of the people who started the Splendid Sampler did a little preview video on Facebook and uh, was saying she had a box of Rick Rack and she was implying that Rick Rack had something to do with the block tomorrow. Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm guessing we're applicating it to something somehow. We might be, maybe we're sewing it into seams. So if we put two seams together and have the Rick Rack pointing out, then we could have like fun little um, Rick Rack dealio sticking out of it. I don't know. Um, I, uh, I have no idea. I'm, you know, if I had a, if I had a guess, we would be applicating it on or just sewing it on in some fashion. Um, Pam Kitty Morning is the designer. And I, I haven't checked, but I think she does a lot of like really cutesy, um, 
fun stuff. I think it might might actually be applique type stuff. I can't quite place it. I can place her colors a little bit more. Like when I think of her, I mean, I'm literally I'm, I'm I'm not great at knowing these things, but like. When I picture her, I think of like that turquoise color and the red color together. That's so cute with the with the white and and that sort of look with cute doodads and stuff on it. So that would be like the rickrack. Um, so I don't know. I'll have to look look her up though again um, tonight. See if I can guess. <laughs> so it sounds that um, at least for me, it's going to be pretty early tomorrow that they are going to release it. They said that it, uh, she's going to release it tomorrow at 9 Eastern time. So that's, wait, is that later? No, that's earlier here. So that's, that's 8 o'clock here, Central time. Yep, 8 Central. So um, I'll have to check it out then. That's my... Morning, reading my book time. Eight-ish in the morning. What's the name of my polish? I think it's called, it's OPI, and I think it's uh, like very, very, berry or super, super berry, or two words and berry. I, I kind of like it. I, I had to replace all my, my uh, um, nail polish, polishes lately, and I, I really like it. Um, when I wear it, I feel like I'm in like an 80s ad, <laughs> the color wise. And I, I wasn't expecting that when, or early 90s, this is like in some early 90s, like pop arty looking, you know, ad for like hair, <laughs> you know, it's, it's an orchidy color, but the name is something like very, 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 something like that. I think it's a cuter word than very though. It's like, pretty, pretty berry or something like that. But it's OPI is, is the brand. And I, I think this is my favorite one so far. I've decided when I got the new nail polishes, I got some Essie as well. And uh, I, I love that color. That's the color that's called um, in stitches. And that's what made me buy it. <laughs> it was a cute color. I was looking at it anyway, but it was named in stitches. I'm like, okay, they named this one for me. I have to get it. But I, I think I've decided I like OPI as a brand better than Essie after, um, after trying both. Yep, it definitely sealed the deal. Um, all right, so we're, I'm going to jump over to here and start going along the edge. We're almost out of the, the thread, so we'll do some more. Oh, we, we're doing well on time. I'm, I'm happy. So we're doing great on time, actually. So I think... Uh, you know, we'll still go over a little bit tonight, I think, but uh, hopefully not too much. Painting class is going awesome. I am so in love with it. I, uh, you know, which I am with all shiny new things. <laughs> shiny new crafts. Uh, we were just, I was, we were just having a conversation in one of the Facebook groups I'm in uh, with a bunch of designers on, um, shiny object syndrome, <laughs> you know what I mean, where, where we just want to try new things and learn new things and then figure out how to like make it work for us in, in business or our patterns or, or that sort of thing, but I am definitely in shiny object mode. I, I love it so much and I'm just thinking, oh man, how can I paint, do more of this painting and, and how can I set up areas of the house so I can paint and, you know, all these things. Oh, you're painting a barn quilt? Oh, so cool. I would love to do one of those sometime, those cool barn quilt blocks, like a really big one and hang it up. I think that would just be so neat. I love seeing those driving around. Yeah, exactly, Cora. And you know, a lot of times when I have, um, a lot of times just taking a class really does, you know, help me come up with whatever, you know, what product I want to do next and that sort of thing too. So, so I'm, I'm really liking it. Yeah. I've jumped from hobby to hobby too. I just kind of decided at this point to be like, you know what, I'm going to just be the person that jumps from hobby to hobby. And it, you know, that's kind of why I'm liking this Periscope. And you know, when I started this Periscope before I got into the Splendid Sampler stuff, 
It was just kind of all sorts of hobbies, like whatever, well, all sorts of crafts, um, crafting related things. So sometimes it was sewing, sometimes it was, you know, mending, sometimes it was embroidery, whatever. And, uh, you know, I'm like, you know what, I, I like doing this. And I, a lot of times I just like learning how to do something. And then once I've learned how to do it, I'm like, okay, I understand it. It's not a mystery anymore. Now I can move on, you know? It's just like, I need to know how that works. And then once I learn how it works, I'm good to go. I don't need to do it anymore. But other times I just want to like go all in like this oil painting thing. Like I'm, I, I have, I just have like ideas up the wazoo and all I want to do is set up an area and paint and uh, you know, not do anything else. <laughs> That's unlikely, but I would like to at least set, set up an area and then, um, you know, to have the paints and everything out all the time so I can just go down and do it or wherever I'm, you know, in the basement or wherever I have it set up. But I would love to paint more and, you know, have actual canvases and stuff that I, you know, doing, doing like a series of something and that I can hang up somewhere, play around with an idea and I don't know, it, it just sounds like so much fun. But we'll get through this class first, I think. I'm a little nervous for this next painting. I, I'm going to go in a little early, I think, on, uh, on Monday, which is my next class, just to add a couple more tweaks to my last painting before we critique it. I know I definitely have new hobby syndrome, for sure. Um, so I'm going to finish up my painting from last Monday uh, for our critique at the beginning of class. So I'm going to get in a little early and do that. And then after our critique, we're going to be working on our new one that we did the underpainting for last week. And I'm a little unsure about that one. I love the colors. It's going to be blue and orange, basically. Um, the still life is set up to be blue and orange, too. It's got, like, a bright orange tablecloth and some, um, like, this orange bird ceramic weird thing and uh, some blue books and this... Uh, like China wear or like that where it has the white with the blue kind of <laughs> University of Florida with the blue decorative floral stuff on it a little vase and you know some lemons and oranges and that sort of thing so that's the the um, setup the still life but I kind of am unsure if I like how I've framed it so I kind of have it going off the edge of the painting a little bit, and I don't know. <laughs> I'm not sure if I like that or not. I had a thought that, like, oh, maybe I could leave this open space over here, but I'm not sure if it's effective. But I'm kind of, um, for this class at least, I'm kind of stuck with it a little bit now. But I don't know. We'll see. You know, unless I went in there during the week. Like, I could go in there, like, tomorrow if I wanted to, because in the summer there's no one with the partial off the canvas. Oh, yeah, so that's, oh, so that's totally what I'm doing. Um, part, it's going to partially be off the canvas. But there's no classes there in summer, so technically I could probably go in during the week uh, and then redo the underpainting if I wanted to. But, I don't know, I can't, I can't justify doing that when I have a lot of work to do at home here. You know, it's enough that I've taken that couple hours a week to just spend time on that. But man, I would love to just go into that, into the painting studio every single day there at uh, Minneapolis College of Art and Design. It has a beautiful, bright, sunny, large uh, painting studio that's just, would be a great place to hang out every day. Um, I would love to just hang out and do that. That was the nice thing about going to school is is you have that dedicated time to just do do all that stuff. But I suppose I gotta work too, huh? So <laughs> So yeah, so I'll just go in and in and work with what I got. Yep. <laughs> make make makeovers and reviews. Yeah, I uh let's just let's decide where we're gonna start here. I think I'm going to go around the whole outside and then go back and do the inside stuff. That's my plan. So again, I'm mapping it out. I'm mapping it out. I'm going to go all the way around this outside and then stitch 
these little things because these kind of go on the outside edge a little bit some of these um, some of these little loops so I want those to be on the outside so I want to make sure they're on top of this line so that means I have to stitch that line first so that's what I'm gonna do all right it's gonna be a little tough I'm a little close to the edge of my hoop which makes it a little tougher to weave it in but we're doing it anyway but yeah I'm totally liking the class. I haven't figured out yet. We talked about this a little yesterday after my class. I have to look it up yet. But I haven't quite figured out how you would do any of this at home. Because there's, you're dealing with oils and solvents. And that's what, kind of why I never got into it before. Because I just didn't know what to, how to use any of that stuff. But there's a proper way to throw it away. And you can't just throw that stuff away. Because it's super flammable and you know, can combust at any moment sort of thing. Um, so like you have to dispose of your rags and, and other things in a really specific way. And I'm not sure how one does that at home. So I'm gonna have to do some research. I'm sure that would be like four seconds of research on the internet. Okay, I got a little knot in here. So I'm sure I can figure it out pretty easily. I'm thinking there's a bajillion YouTube videos on how to paint and stuff too, so. Um, dang, this is an annoying knot that just wrapped around the edge there. All right, there we got it out. <sighs> hate when that happens. Okay, let's trim our little end here. You keep your stuff in a can, like a big can. Yeah, like the, at the school, they have a big can that everything gets thrown in, but then that gets thrown out somehow at some point. Um, I'm sure I can just bring it to a place or whatever, but I'm thinking that can would fill up pretty quickly. I don't know. Oh, let me get you guys in focus. No, O2 can get in. Oh, that's interesting. Is that the deal? So it, it goes into something where no oxygen can get in? Man, I don't know any of that stuff. I was thinking she'd kind of tell us how to do that at home. Outside house paint cans. Oh, that's interesting. Just put it in an outside house paint can. Okay. I like that idea. So put in the no oxygen thing so it doesn't catch fire. Yeah, see, that would be ideal. <laughs> Not to catch fire everywhere. Because ideally I would be doing this in my basement, like have a setup up there. Okay, so no holes. But what happens when you open and close to put stuff in? Do you have to suck out the oxygen or something? I don't know, but I totally want to get something set up. Oh, that's okay when it, it just opens and closes. So just while it's in there, it just doesn't close. Okay, that's interesting. I'll have to look closer next time in class. I have barely any sticky stuff here anymore, so I'm just trying to... It wants to come off there. I should maybe face that down. Okay, I'll I'll, I'll look at it at school at, during my class and, and see. Look at it a little bit closer like that. But yeah, that, that paint can thing, that's interesting because that you could, if you had like a huge paint can, I bet you if I went to Home Depot or something, I'm sure they have tons of empty paint cans from their painting area, I bet you maybe I can, oh, if you seal it, then it's safe. Okay. I bet you I can maybe talk them into giving me like a really big one or something. Okay. See, good. That's why I have you, you guys. That's <laughs> keep me from catching fire. <laughs> but yeah, I wonder if they'd give me like a big, big, uh, container or something, and then I can just open and close it and then you know, do a big toss set of facility or something. You can buy them for like four dollars. Oh, just empty paint cans? That's cool. I don't know anything. Yeah, the, I like the variegated floss on here too. It's super subtle. It's just a bright red to a slightly darker red and that's it. Empty buckets and cans. Oh, that's cool. I didn't know that. That's what a community is for. <laughs> I think you use... Oh, that's so sweet. 
Yeah, I mean, I've learned so much from you guys about, like, everything uh, during these periscopes. It's awesome. Pink stars and hardware store places. Okay, well, sheesh. That's easy enough. I bet you they know where I can throw the stuff away, too. Actually, I think a lot of those places you can bring oil rigs and stuff, too, and they'll, they'll do the disposal for it. I'll have to look into that. Because that would be swell. Fire happens when a person throws a wad of rigs down and leaves it. Oh, just leaves it outside. Oh, okay. Even if they have five gallon containers. Okay. Oh, yeah, yeah, exactly. Oh, the dump. Have stitched more in the last few months than ever. <laughs> Diane, I am right there with you. I have stitched more in the last few months than, like, years of time. It's kind of crazy. It moderated your comment. Oh, you know what? I think that's a new that's a new thing that Periscope is doing, and I think it's random. I have not personally seen it yet, but every once in a while, if a comment pops up, you might get asked, is this for real, or is this spam, or is this okay? I think they're just trying to get a sense of what, I don't know, I don't know, they're like building a library of what's good and what's not on Periscope so they can start spamming. Yeah, I have tag words or something. Does it look okay is what it asks. Oh, yeah, so it should ask something like that. Does this look okay? And then it's like, what What did it say, Cora? Was it like, yes, um, maybe, or spam, or something like that? All right, we are almost done with this outside. Oh, we are so going to do, take this embroidery stapler off tonight. Approve and deny, I think. Oh, okay. Sometimes a word that has a dual meaning can trigger. Oh, interesting. So I, I haven't seen it myself yet, so that's that's interesting. My guess is that fire triggered the mod moderator. <laughs> that could be. All right, one more stitch on this. Oh, it's you. <laughs> Thinking about doing oh colors would be so beautiful so many the I mean colors it actually has a on the instructions um it has a whole page two pages of color suggestions on how they say to stitch in the design so uh, uh, color is is how it was originally intended and so many people are doing such cute color ones. Um, so I would say totally go for it in color. All right, I'm gonna start these little lazy daisies. These are teeny tiny lazy daisies. Yeah, if you go to the the um, page for it, so um, on the splendidsampler.com and go into, uh, uh, on the top in the menu, there'll be a, one that says like, the blocks and bonus projects or something like that. That's the name of it. If you scroll down, to this block and click on the link, it will go to the page for this block. The, the, um, the, the uh, blog post for it. And at the bottom of that blog post, you can see everyone who's uploaded their photos for this block. And it's just kind of awesome seeing all the color variations and what everyone's doing. Yeah, totally creative versions. So a lot of people are doing applique for it. Uh, so they'll make like the little, the little bird wing and the little heart and applique. And sometimes some of these, these little books here, some people are using fabric paint to paint in the whole design and then doing a little embroidery. It's just kind of crazy. Just so many things that people are doing. Um, there's a few more just uh, one color things too. And it's just really fun to see. People are just all so interesting and, and creative and yeah. So I mean, there's definitely no right or wrong on, on these things for sure. So on this design, these lazy daisies are popping out of the book a little bit. So I'm, I'm doing that just a hair here just to kind of stick with the design. I thought about using crayons to give it more color. That's interesting. I think that, I think that's what uh, 
I think I saw one like that where um, it was kind of like a fabric crayon that they went kind of like on the edges a little just to give it a, like a little soft blush look to it. Uh, crayons would be interesting. I've never used uh, crayons on fabric like that. There are crayons that are intended for fabric. I don't know if those are different than normal crayons. All right, I'm going to do this little French knot, and then I'm going to move on to these other lazy daisies. So for the French knot, it's, I always, I always, always need like, I would love to have three hands for a French knot because you kind of need two to work the fabric, and it'd be awesome if you had another one that could still hold the hoop, but I just put it on a, a flat surface. All right, so I'm doing two loops and pointing it back down there. All right, then I can pick it up again. It's tight against the needle, and I'm just going to hold, hold the knot there. So when we're done with this blended sampler, which will be a long time, it'll be like February, probably, of 2017, uh, but when we're done with this blended sampler and we're back to uh, making, this is assuming that I'm still doing these periscopes and YouTubes and stuff, um, then we'll be back to doing a bunch of different crafts again, or picking a different project to work on. And uh, I'm hoping then that I can get some some oil painting in, like some live oil painting stuff done. That would be kind of fun. That'd be like way fun. I'm so excited about it. I'm I'm hoping I'm still excited about it when February comes along. You know, and I am still working on getting Twitch up and running. I just have not had a moment to spend time on that, um, just with other things that I'm trying to get done. Um, but I'm hoping to do more crafty sessions on there where it's not the Splendid Sampler stuff, so we can, we can still work on some other projects at different times during the week. But I still don't have it set up. It's one of those things that if I... Uh, you can't picture me not excited about a craft. It's true. Oh, I would love to learn how to blow glass. There's actually in town here a place that teaches how to do that. And you know what? That'd be really fun. I should tell John that I want that for my birthday. <laughs> my birthday's coming up in, in July. And um, yeah, this place does, does glass blowing. And... Um, you can go there and take classes and do, you know, like a one-day class. People actually do it for bachelorette parties and stuff too, but it's a full-on legit thing. It's like, it's it's not like a little kid place. It's got, um, you know, real fire and real dudes doing this stuff, and you uh, you blow in the things and you crush all the glass and, and all that stuff. It's like a full-on real glass blowing thing, but I think you can do it where you just take like a one, you know, several hour class or something and you make like a, a paperweight or something. Uh, but that would be awesome. Oh man, putting ideas in my head. <laughs> that's, that's one that I can see doing because I, I want to do it. <laughs> there's a Chihuly Thomas, that'd be freaking rad. Uh, there's a big, there's a Chihuly in, um, in our museum here, the, 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 oh my god, Minneapolis Institute of Art, jeez, I just totally forgot the name of our museum, uh, but they have a big Chihuly, um, Chihuly is an artist that does these crazy glass blown just shapes and structures, and, and there's a big chandelier that's, uh, just like orange and, um, yellow kind of swirly globs that uh, all together in a circle uh, in, at the museum by us here. But yeah, so that's that's a craft that I could see doing once to be like, okay, I've done it once and it was cool, and then being okay with that. <laughs> that one is one that I I don't see me ever getting too into it, but I don't know, who knows? Yeah, like skydiving, do it once and then you're okay with that. My uncle skydives like a bajillion times. He actually does 
those formations in the sky. I think they were going for like a world record or something a little while ago for um, a, a bunch of just for amount of people in it. But he he does he does that thing where I think he's 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 the guy that I guess has to swoop down really fast and go in the middle or something like that. Um, I don't know. Crazy town. That's what I think. <laughs> I'm sure it's thrilling and amazing and wonderful, but I don't know. I'd rather get my thrills out of trying a crazy new craft or learning how to paint or something. Okay, oh, kickboxing and martial arts. See, that sounds interesting. That I could see myself getting into, honestly. Like the, um, oh wow, with the wingsuits and stuff. Oh wow, that's a lot of jumps. But yeah, I mean, I could see at some point taking a martial arts class and totally falling in love with it. Like, in my brain, that sounds like it's sending triggers to my brain that I would kind of like that. But we'll see. I'll stick with, stick with, uh, my oil painting class for right now. <laughs> and then see what comes up next. I don't take classes all that often, and I, I'm kind of thinking I should do it more often. I think the last class I took was a pottery class. That had to be almost 10 years ago, though. Using the structure. Oh, and an aerospace uh, engineer. Wow. Parks for years. Oh, keeps me flexible. Oh, that's interesting. You know what? That's something I'm trying to work on is my flexibility because I am very unflexible and, and genetically, like everyone in, in my family has like super tight uh, hamstrings and so that makes, you know, flexibility not good. <laughs> uh, but that's, that's uh, something I'm trying to work on more, although I'm, I, I'm not working on it as much as my uh, trying to like lift weights and stuff or my, my workout that I do every other day or so. I, I'm just trying to, on my off days, to do my, like, a stretch routine, and that has been falling to the wayside, and I don't want it to. Um, so, I don't know. I gotta get back into that again. I don't think I'm gonna have, yeah, a lifestyle change. I gotta, I'm trying to get that going again. I'm not gonna have enough thread here uh, to finish these last little bits, so luckily I do have... We started out with six strands of embroidery, like a one, you know, our one thread that was uh, made up of six strands. We started out with just one cut of that tonight, and we're going to use it all. So this is my last two little strands. Yeah, Cora, I got a little, I downloaded someone's thing from the internet. It's called Get Bendy. <laughs> it's just kind of a bunch of pictures in sequence. Um, kind of in sequence, but of just stretching poses. Cause you know, I've done yoga a little bit and stuff like that. And you know, if I took a yoga class, I could maybe get into it, but I haven't been able to get into that on my own. I just, when I work out, I want to like really work out. And even when it's stretching, like I want to count the numbers to 30 or a minute or whatever. And I want to, you know, I don't know. I just, the yoga stuff I haven't gotten into on my own quite a bit yet. So this get bendy thing is kind of a lot of stretches that, oh, around a four year old, that's funny. So the, the get bendy is a lot of stretches that are used in yoga sometime, or that stretch the same thing, but it's not as yoga-y. <laughs> So that's, that's kind of what I've been doing uh, until I get, I figure, you know, until I can get a little better at that and if, until I can make it a consistent thing in my life, then I can move on to something else. Like once I feel like, okay, I'm doing this flexibility stuff consistently every other day or every day, then, then that, oh, you're starting the whole 30. Okay, Kathy, I'm starting tomorrow. So today is day two. Okay, awesome. All right, good. So I'm, I'm starting tomorrow. I told my husband uh, tonight that I, am, I need to start it again. Um, I just need to. And uh, we've just been eating like Dairy Queen and all that again, and I need to just not be doing that. And 
I got a ton of groceries yesterday and prepped all the groceries, so um, that's how I am too, Cora. Like cooking the whole 30 but misbehaving. So I want to do it for real again, so good! Kathy, that's awesome that you're you're doing it. Looking up the whole 30. Uh, I would get check out from your library or or get the book. It's called The Whole 30 by Melissa Hartwig. And I actually just read Oh, you're gonna start green smoothies. I actually just read I'm not I haven't just read, I'm I'm still reading. I'm I'm almost uh, a little over halfway through their other book, which is called It Starts with Food. So I was thinking about it, and it, if you're thinking about doing the Whole30, my recommendation would be to get the Whole30 book first, because that's all about the program and gets you really set up and, and you know, the adrenaline to get started and, and doing right away. Like, it's the Just Do It book. Um, and the... I'm going to weave it in one more time just to get to the starting point. The It Starts With Food book is similar, like it talks about the plant, like the whole 30 and everything still, but it gets into the science, like it gets into the why of it all, um, of uh, like how food affects your body and it really breaks it down to the non-abstract anymore. Oh, you bought both books? Have you read It Starts With Food yet? I am really, I love like the sciencey stuff and the why. Like, you know, I'm like, okay, well, why and how? And, you know, so it's not just, like, jargon that people are saying, you know? That's what I hate. Like, oh, this is really good for whatever. It's it, because it's loaded with, you know, antioxidants and blah, blah, blah. This would actually break down what that means and how it, it works in your body. And, I mean, I highly, highly recommend it, that book, especially if you're um, way into the why. And uh, I'm, I'm really loving it. I, I'm actually going to buy it, I think. Um, I'm, I have it from the library. And uh, took two days to repair it. Oh, nice. So I'm, I'm just working through that book now, and I'm totally loving it. But yeah, I am a proponent of... Um, I love the science behind those things, too. I mean, if I don't get the science, and if that doesn't make sense, then it doesn't... It's it doesn't resonate with me. So this one's all about the science, but I do still recommend, and they break it down into a way that makes sense. Um, I do think it's still best to get the Whole30 first and read that and just jump in. And then while you're doing the Whole30, start reading this other book, because it'll, it'll reinforce the science of why you're doing it and, and all that. But um, for me, I'm happy that I did the, read the Whole30 book first, so I could just jump in and do the doing. And the format of it, of the Whole30 book, is more from a doing standpoint, too, versus, uh, you know, the, it starts with food is more like a normal book format. And so, like, you know, you're just sitting in your chair and reading book versus, like, a manual type thing. I'm working on simplifying things right now, but green smoothies are my next research. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, so my fridge is full of everything, which is awesome. And uh, the trick is I'm going to just have to make sure I prepare dinners, because... Dinners is where we fall off the wagon real quick, and that's when we want to get the Dairy Queens now that it's nice out, and and um, when I want to just eat chocolate or just eat crappy stuff or have a glass of wine or, or all that sort of stuff, and um, or like, you know, just eat random crap. Uh, so as long as I'm prepared, like the things I've made, then I'll like, okay, fine, I'll eat that. Would you eat more fruits than suggested, though? Would like to eat more fruits than suggested, though. Oh, yeah, it's in the, in the, it starts with food. They kind of say that, you know, fruits are great and everything, and you can eat a bunch, but um, the vegetables are necessary. The fruit is optional, so that's, that's kind of 
Like, don't, don't replace the veggies with fruit. Because the veggies aren't necessary, the fruit is optional. I'm like, oh, that's something that I need to remember, because I do that a lot. I'll just grab a, some fruit or, or that sort of thing. Eight, two fruits a day. That's going to be the trick for me, I think, is, is a, um, not having as much fruit as I do. Uh, I think it's just going to, the big thing for me is just more veggies. I need to focus on that a little bit. Yeah, exactly. And I mean, the whole thing, oh, I'm on my last French knot, guys, here. The whole thing is uh, to get your body to not be reliant on sugar for energy, because most of us are reliant on sugar for energy because we've trained our body to use sugar for energy. So just replacing with other uh, food or sugary food is, um, but you know, fruit is still way, way better. And it, food isn't, fruit isn't just all sugar. It's got all those other good things in it. So it's not that it's a bad thing. It's just that don't replace vegetables with fruit because your vegetables are going to be better for you. But anyway, that's, that's a little detail. Yeah, that's just the person's veggies. Fruits are still way better than, you know, Whatever you were eating before. <laughs> oh, I love avocados. I eat, since doing the whole 30, I, I have a lot, I eat a lot more olives because you, you need like the right amount of, um, you need fats, the, like good fats in your diet. That's why the avocados and stuff and the olives because um, fats help transport proteins and stuff to the right place or something. I don't know. I, I have to read. Um, when I'm done with, uh, it starts with food, I'm going to buy it uh, so I own a copy instead of just a library copy, and I'm going to, I need to read it again because there's so much to learn. <laughs> I want to read it again. But alright guys, we are done with the embroidery! So that's awesome. So it did take about an hour yet to do just this tiny little section. Yeah, you can barely see. You can see. Here's a, it's a little darker, then it gets a little brighter. It is really subtle. So, all right, let's take it off. Yay, I'm so excited. So I have, uh, this is my favorite thing to do, is take the Fabricel off. So let's get her out of the hoop here. Let me just move some things out of the way. I'm going to move my, my pattern out of the way just so I don't get it all wet and the, all this stuff. And okay, here we are. So I got two bowls of water here. Do you trim any way? I don't when I have this amount. I mean, this is not much to trim away. I, I'm not going to trim any of this. If I had like it going out to here or a big sheet of it, then maybe I would. I'm not going to bother with it here. So I am. I uh, have my. I have two bowls here. I have. Let's get this one over here. Uh, one is for to start out with, and then when it gets too dirty, I'm going to switch to the clean water. And you can just do this over the sink, but I just do it for Periscope. I do it here. Um, so we'll just get going. The temperature doesn't really matter uh, as far as, I've tried it with warm, I've tried it with cold. Uh, this is a little cool right now. Um, just It's just been sitting out here. I know, I'm excited to see what it looks like on this fabric. So let's just do it. Uh, I do have on hand some color catchers just in case this does run. It's DMC floss uh, from ages ago, but it's it's DMC floss, and I haven't ever really had trouble with with their floss running. But I do have it on hand in case we need to try. <clears throat> so just agitating it a little. So here it's starting to break off. So I, I'm not doing anything really. I'm just kind of moving it around. And I probably wouldn't need to. I could probably just let it sit in here. But there, see all the big parts are off now. And now it's just like all these little parts. Oh, it's going to be cute. I can't wait to dry it out. 
Oh, I like uh, I like the same color as the background look. <laughs> you gotta go get some olives now. Funny. Yeah, I just bought a ton of olives. So right now I'm just kind of massaging gently all the little um, the little bits. There's a lot of nooks and crannies to this one, so this might take a little bit of time to do. Oh, you know what? I gotta plug in um, plug in my iron. So I'm gonna just let this soak here for a second. I don't always do that, but um, I'm just gonna plug in the iron quick, quick, and uh, so I have it for when we're done here. But if you are taking your fabric selby off and it's just not coming out of all these little little bits in here, just let it sit in the water for a little, like clean water, and that should should help it a little bit. Yeah, because see, you know, we got all these little bits hiding in here yet. So I'm just gonna go around, we'll be here for a little while. I'm just gonna go around each little area, kind of massage it a little bit. Ooh, this is fun, some of it. Like, I like this part here where um, where it's the darker floss. You can really tell the dark, the darker to the lighter floss, like how dark it is here, and then it gets really bright right there. That's fun, the variegated um, bits there. But see here, you can see that we still have a lot of it stuck in between all the little bits and stuff, so we're gonna we're gonna keep keep massaging it. Just gently going through everything. But yeah, I mean, with it wet like this, uh, the um, the variegated floss is coming out so much more than what it, it seemed like when I was embroidering it. So that's kind of fun. I'm kind of really excited about that. Uh, it'd be fun to do more variegated floss. I rarely, rarely, rarely ever use variegated floss. And then for the Splendid Sampler, I think I've used it uh, two or three times already. And... And I'm really liking it, so I, I don't know, I can see myself playing with it a little bit more. I think it was like a control thing for me. Like, I, I can't control the color as much with variegated floss, but I think that's why I'm liking it, too. It's like a forced uncontrol, you know? It, it forces you to just let go a little bit, I think, is what I'm realizing. So I'm gonna just massage this area over here that I haven't done yet, and then I'm gonna switch to the cleaner water and we will do it some more over there. Once once I get most of it off and um, you know, my water's dirty and stuff in here, but like once I get like pretty much as much as I can get off, then I will switch to the clean water. And I don't usually have to do it more than into things of clean water, so I'm hoping I don't need more. I'll do a little on this heart yet. Oh, I'm so excited for this. Oh, I'm excited that we'll have a block done. Oh, the embroidery's done, I want more block. All right, I'm gonna flip to the next water. There, you can see all the stuff in there. So I just dump this down the sink and it seems fine. All right, use my cleaner water. So this is just getting all that residue that might have gotten just laying on the fabric off and uh, from, you know, cause the other water was so dirty. And just to do that final, final brush through of, um, hopefully, getting as much little bits out. It doesn't look like it's bleeding at all, so that's good news. Oh, vegetable sprayer in the sink. That's good thinking. I don't have one of those. That would be like, that's a great idea because the spray would kind of agitate it a little bit too. So that, that sounds awesome. I got a little bit of stuff stuck in the middle of this O. Oh, I guess that's an A, handmade. <laughs> That's a great idea though, I like that. Oh, you know what, that's not, that's just part of the fabric. That's a little white piece of fabric. That's not 
They have Rosalvi, so all right. I think uh, in here though we got we got some. Yeah. This is a pretty cramped space. So in the in those cramped spaces, um, sometimes it's a little more difficult to come out. And if this was like a light colored thread, like a, a white or a yellow, then I might have to do this a little bit longer because you might be able to see some of that laser printing or the, the ink underneath it a little bit. Um, but once it dries, that kind of becomes a little bit more invisible. So um, if you're using a light colored floss and you're sure you got as much out as you can, let it dry and before you know passing judgment on it because um, that usually does the trick. I think we're pretty good here. And this little flower up here too is a little a little bit. I didn't really spend much time on this handmade up here. Let's let's do a little bit more on these. But I think we are pretty good. I think we're good enough here. So alright, I'm just going to um put it on my ironing board. So let me just move this out of the way. Okay, now I got my iron. All right, this other bowl's a little too close to my iron for comfort, so let's move that away too. All right, so I have a fluffy towel you're going to want a fluffy towel and uh, you're going to put your embroidery. I, I press it right after I'm done taking the, yeah, exactly. No electrical shorts. I, I um, press it right when I'm done doing the, the soaking. Uh, I think this takes out the wrinkles right away. This is a really nice shape. Oh, we flipped. Okay. Let me, let me, um, let me tilt you guys up. So I got my iron cooking here. All right, so we use a fluffy towel because we want to keep all our stitches intact. Like we don't want to, we don't want to squish our, you know, French knots that we spent time doing. We don't want to just squish everything. So by having a fluffy towel, it kind of makes a space for the stitches so they don't flatten. So, all right, I'm going to just go on the back of this and you hear it sizzle and we're basically just pressing. And I'm, I'm putting pressure on it. We're basically pressing the water out of it. And you can see already, look, it got lighter here. Yeah, see how light it got? It's, we're drying it out right away. And it's this towel that keeps our stitches intact. And it's so nice to not let this air dry because then you could be done. <laughs> and I think it's, it's much easier at this wet wet stage to, to press it out. So, and it's pretty wet here. You can see that it's dry here and wet here. So what we have to do is um, we just move down the towel because the towel soaked in too much water there. So we got to go to a dry part of the towel and do that. Yeah, the dye runs. You'll know on the white towel for sure. Yep, it's it's doing well, so there's no running yet. So see, the fabric's totally drying out. Um, it'll be a little harder to dry around each of these stitches, but that sometimes I'll just let air dry. But I'm gonna still put some heat on it, try and dry it out as best I can. I'll probably let this sit out overnight anyway, versus throwing it in my um, throwing it in uh, my plastic sleeve, my plastic uh, binder right away, just to make sure that it's completely dry. But I think that's good. Let's just see what it looks like. All right, <laughs> I like it. Oh, I I really like it on this this. Uh, red fabric. I think that's just super fun. Um, I think I'm going to 
let it completely dry before trimming this because um uh, you know i'm tempted to trim it now here let me let me scooch this down i'm tempted to trim it now you know what it's dry enough i think i better i think i better trim it now too just to be done done so let's 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 just do it we're here there's a new black tomorrow we won't be looking at this guy again for a while so i'm gonna trim it let's get rid of this towel but it's perfectly dry now even the stitches like i don't feel any wetness in the stitches at all so um that's why i love um pressing it right away so all right let's get my cutting board all right, and I have my six and a half inch block, which works um, my, my ruler, which is perfect for these, these blocks. And this one, we don't have any other stuff to do. I think it's just done. Um, whereas that nature's walk, I got a whole pile of uh, sewing to do yet on that too, once the embroidery's done. So I'm just trying to kind of center it in there. I'm just trying to, you know, get things to be the same distance away from each other. I'm going to actually turn it a little so it's easier for me to cut, but I'll, I'll line it up first. Um, here's an inch. That's pretty good. Top to bottom. Give it kind of an inch. All right, I think, I think that's looking pretty good right there. I think we're calling it. There we go. Oh, the top has a stem. You're right. Woo! Good catch. Thanks. <laughs> yeah, it was being covered up by uh, by that number two there. Yeah, you're totally right. All right, so this. Okay, yeah. So we got to go up a little higher. Let's let's match that up first, and then then we'll center it. Woo! Oh, you learned by your mistake. Oh my gosh. Thanks so much for telling me. Uh, I'm glad I, I'm glad you did that. All right, so here we go. It's more like a three quarters of an inch or a little more even and three quarters of an inch there. Okay, so this is, this is better. We're a little bit more accurate. I'm okay with it going a little higher, but yeah, we don't want to cut it off. So let's, let's do it on the three quarter inch baseline here and then we'll scooch it over here. Phew, that was a close one. Okay, now we'll center it horizontally. And we'll look a little further. All right, I think that's looking good. I kind of want to rotate it a little there. So we have like a baseline that, that everything's sitting on. Okay, I think, I think we're good right there. Doing it. This is where one of those fancy rulers or fancy uh, fancy cutting boards would come in handy that rotate. We're gonna have to line it up again. All right, there we go. Ooh, but those rubbers on the bottom of these rulers are coming handy. Okay, here's the real finished block. <laughs> I think we did a pretty good job at centering that in there. Cute, and then it'll have another, you know, quarter inch cut off once we sew it in. Yay! So there we are. I think you can really see the variegated. So I'm, I'm like way thumbs up on the variegated floss. That's, I'm so excited. Yes, I love this floss too. All right, guys, I'm going to flip you around and I'll show you it in person for real. Yay, block done. Now I only have seven unfinished ones. But here we go. Oh, it's so clean and nice. I, I love the one color. It's, you know, the variegated floss one color on um, this fabric, I think, just turned out really fun. 
Yay, I'm so happy with it. So the next embroidery art, I'll probably have to do like a bunch of different colors. We still have Nature's Walk, which is a, a pile of colors. But yay, I'm really excited about um, about the variegated floss in the one color. Yay! Yeah, I know only seven. I have a lot of um, I have a lot of embroidery applique and uh, English paper piecing and foundation paper piecing to go. So all right, guys, there we are. Thanks so much for joining me tonight. I'm so happy this one took so long. It was a lot of sessions of embroidery because I've, I've only been working on it uh, with you guys here. So yay, done, check. Tomorrow is new block day, something to do with Rick Rack. <laughs> so I'll see you guys tomorrow night for that. Thanks so much for coming in tonight and um, sitting here with me and, and stitching. I really appreciate it. It's so fun chatting with you guys. I will see you tomorrow. Thanks so much, guys. Good night.